The holidays are quickly approaching and you're probably trying to figure out which MacBook you should buy, whether it's for yourself or you're buying it as a gift. Well today, we've got every MacBook available from Apple's current MacBook lineup and they're all the base models, including the 13-inch MacBook Air, the 12-inch Retina MacBook, the 13-inch non-touch bar MacBook Pro, the quad-core 13-inch MacBook Pro, and finally, the six-core 15-inch MacBook Pro. All of them are currently on sale for some pretty amazing prices, but only for a limited time, so make sure to use the links in the video description below to buy one before the deals are gone. You can also check out our Apple Price Guide, where the best deals on Apple products are updated every single day. With so much in common between these MacBooks, it seems like a tough decision, so let's break them down into categories that really matter. We'll talk about performance in just a minute, but let's start with portability. The 12-inch MacBook is by far the thinnest and lightest one of them all, weighing in at only 2 pounds compared to 2.75 pounds for the Air, 3 pounds for the 13-inch MacBook Pros, and 4 pounds for the 15-inch Pro. From above, it's also noticeably smaller than the rest of the MacBooks, so small that it almost feels like a toy, but that makes it incredibly portable. As for the Air, it's basically as large as a 13-inch Pro, so portability should be identical, other than being a quarter of a pound lighter. One thing you'll notice is the difference in shape. All of the MacBook Pros have more of a flat slate shape compared to the 12-inch MacBook and the MacBook Air, which have a wedge design that gets thinner near the front end. Every single one of these MacBooks has a high-quality Retina resolution display, but there are some differences that you should know about. Even though the new 2018 MacBook Air is the newest, it actually has the worst display. It's the least color accurate and it's also the dimmest display as well. Even the 12-inch MacBook's display is brighter and it supports a wider range of colors. Now if you really care about the display, all three of the MacBook Pros feature an incredible 500 nits of brightness and P3 wide color gamut support so they're super bright and incredibly color accurate. This is gonna be a huge deal if you wanna use your laptop outside or you wanna minimize bright reflections on the screen. On top of that, the Touch Bar MacBook Pros also get True Tone, a feature that adjusts the color balance of the display to match your environment. I personally love this feature. Speaker quality and volume is a huge deal, so here's a sound comparison so you can hear the differences for yourself. The 12-inch MacBook offers the quietest speakers with the least amount of bass. Volume and bass goes up a little bit on the 13-inch MacBook Air, but going to the 13-inch MacBook Pros, everything gets better. The volume increases significantly, the bass is deeper and punchier, and the highs become very crisp and clear. The 15-inch MacBook Pro gets even louder speakers with more bass and a well-rounded sound. Now onto the keyboards, they're all packing Apple's butterfly keys, but the new 13-inch MacBook Air and the 2018 Touch Bar MacBook Pros feature the third-generation butterfly keyboard, which includes a silicone barrier beneath the keyboard that's meant to protect the switches from debris that can possibly cause some keys to fail. It was a pretty rare issue to begin with, but the extra peace of mind is nice to have, and it also makes the keyboard quieter as well. Apart from that, the MacBooks that feature the wedge design are are a little bit more comfortable to type on since the keyboard slopes downward towards the front edge. The 2018 MacBook Pros also come with a touch bar, giving you interactive and customizable buttons, along with the Touch ID sensor for logging in and using Apple Pay. The new MacBook Air also gets the Touch ID sensor even though it's missing the touch bar, so that's a nice plus for that model, considering it's the cheapest. Those models also come with Apple's T2 security chip, and if you don't know what that is, click the eye icon above when this video is over. Now let's talk about the ports. The 12-inch MacBook only gets a single port, so if you want to charge and transfer data at the same time, you'll have to buy a USB-C hub. On top of that, it doesn't support Thunderbolt 3, so you're limited to only 5 gigabits per second transfer speed instead of 40 on the rest of the MacBooks which do support Thunderbolt 3. The MacBook Air and the non-Touch Bar MacBook Pro both get two ports, and both of the 2018 Touch Bar MacBook Pros actually get four of them, so they're the best options if you love having a lot of ports. If you love large trackpads, the 15-inch Pro has the biggest one of them all, and the 12-inch MacBook obviously has the smallest one. The 13-inch MacBook Air has a considerably smaller trackpad than the 13-inch MacBook Pro, which is interesting because the machines themselves are basically the same size. 
For battery life, the new MacBook Air is rated at 12 hours compared to 10 hours on the rest of the MacBooks, so if battery life is what you're after, the Air is the best option. And if you love using FaceTime, they're all packing HD webcams except for the 12-inch MacBook, which only gets a 480p FaceTime camera. Finally, let's talk about performance starting with the processors. All but the Touch Bar MacBook Pros have dual-core processors. The 13-inch Touch Bar MacBook Pro gets a quad-core processor, and the 15-inch model gets a 6-core processor. Looking at raw processing power with Geekbench 4, we see a small spike in performance with the non-Touch Bar 13-inch MacBook Pro and a huge increase with the Touch Bar MacBook Pros, thanks to the extra cores. We also looked at performance per dollar using the full retail price of each MacBook, and the 2018 13-inch quad-core MacBook Pro comes out on top, with the 15-inch model trailing slightly behind. As expected, the 12-inch MacBook gives you extremely low performance per dollar. One thing to note is that the 12-inch MacBook is the only one without a fan, so performance will take a bigger hit if it starts to heat up. Now looking at raw graphics performance with Geekbench 4, the MacBook Pros have a huge advantage here, and the 15-inch MacBook Pro skyrockets in terms of performance, and that's because it's the only model with a dedicated graphics chip. As for graphics performance per dollar, the 13-inch non-touch bar MacBook Pro wins here because of its low price, and the 15-inch MacBook Pro is right behind it. So if you're still confused on which MacBook you should buy, I'll break it down for you. If you want the thinnest, lightest MacBook you can get, and you don't really care about performance, ports, webcam quality, or having the best speakers, then buy the 12-inch MacBook. If you want the absolute best battery life, Touch ID in the third generation keyboard, but you don't care that much about performance, display brightness, or the smaller trackpad, then go with the new 13-inch MacBook Air. Now if you want some extra performance, better speakers, a very bright and color accurate display, you don't care much for Touch ID, and you don't have the money to spend on the 2018 Touch Bar MacBook Pros, then definitely go with the 13-inch non-Touch Bar MacBook Pro. Now if you're trying to get the best processor performance you can get for your dollar, go with the 13-inch Touch Bar MacBook Pro in its quad-core processor. You'll get four Thunderbolt 3 ports, the Touch Bar with Touch ID, the T2 security chip, and the third generation keyboard. If you're someone who wants the absolute best with the biggest trackpad, the best speakers, the biggest display, and the highest performance you can get with a powerful 6-core processor and a dedicated graphics chip for intense rendering tasks, then definitely go for the 15-inch MacBook Pro. That's the exact model that I bought for myself because it personally feels the most professional to me with its largest 15-inch display, top-of-the-line speakers, and incredible performance. So hopefully this video helps you make up your mind, and please use the links in the video description for the best deals on MacBooks you can find anywhere, and also check out our Apple price guide as well, which also includes the best deals on every product Apple sells, like iPad Pros and AirPods. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media and we'll see you in the next video.